Hello, this is an introduction video for the people who like to start working with a Trocari workflow. I will show you some principles, how to work with, with the workflow, uh, what you can do with it. This is the screen that you will see when you start processing data and open a workflow. Uh, on the left side, you will see all the nodes you can put on the canvas. You can search those nodes, for example, typing start. I would like to find a start node. You can drag and drop the node. And then when you select, for example, an end node, you can connect it with an edge. It's called an edge or a connection. You double click on the node. So you can rename the node, start node. And you can also see the form that you fill. Uh, and this way you configure how this node works. So for example, the start node, you can see that it can accept only the following event types. So for, for example, this node will only accept a page view. So here you can configure how the node works. When you save it, you can see that it will accept page view. And this is a start node. You can have multiple start nodes on one canvas. In this way, you can, for example, this, this node will accept all the event types and this one will accept only page view event types. So you can process like uh, one event with two workflows. One important thing is that you have to see that this is a draft. That means that this workflow is not on a production. When you click deploy, the workflow will be visible on production so it will work right now we are working on a not deployed workflow so it is not working on production another important thing is that when you scroll over the nodes here you have a like a short description what this node does for example this one throws an exception and stops workflow you can drag it and connect it some other nodes can do different things like joining the payload if you need some additional documentation you can click on on the node Let's go and click on this one. And you can see that there is a node documentation, but it documents how you can configure the node with the advanced JSON setup. So I will go and show you where the whole information about the node configuration is stored. So when you click here, you see the form. When you fill this form here, we have a JSON configuration file that saves the information from the form. When we click collect debug information, you can see that there is debug true. Go back and turn it off, it's debug false. This schema defines how the node works. And when you go down, you can also see the information about the plugin, the documentation. And here we describe the information about the configuration. Most of the plugins, most of the nodes have a documentation. So for segmentation, here we go. But this one may not have the documentation. I double click on it and nothing appears. That means there is no documentation of this node. And the last tab is action row data. This is mostly for us. We have like an insight into the data of the certain node. And we didn't talk about the first tab, this is the uh, information about the plugin, who wrote the plugin, where the plugin is in the system, and what input outputs you can see with this plugin. There's more documentation on the node. When you move the mouse over the ports, we call it ports, input ports, input port and output ports, you can see the name of that port. But when you click on it, you can see additional documentation. It says that this port will return an empty payload uh, object. Let's find some more interesting notes. Like if when you double click on it, you can see that you can type the condition. You have the same the same tabs. But when you move the mouse over the, the ports, you can click on it and you can see that it returns the payload, the input payload, if the find condition is met. And this is when the condition is not met. We call everything that comes into the node a payload and everything that comes out from the node, we call it also payload. And now it's time for advanced runtime settings. When you double click on the node and go into advanced runtime settings, you see that there's a lot of settings. The first one is skip this node at runtime. What it means, sometimes you don't want to delete a node. You just want to skip it for testing purposes, for example. You just select this, this switch and you can see that this node is great. That means it will not work. It will just pass the payload from the input to the output and it will not work. For example, in this workflow, when we run it, we don't want to get 
the push notification. We just want to test, for example, this this part if the somebody is in a designated area. Another setting is stop flow on this node. This will make the workflow to stop the branch that uh, this action is in. For example, if we had like two branches and we mark this block on this node, you can see that this part was not executed. So if we had more actions here, okay, maybe we can like throw an error and run it. You can see that this one is also not executed. Another one is stop workflow on this node if value did not change. This one is very useful. So let's imagine that this workflow serves as a notification logic for some people entering some designated area. We have events coming here, like a location of a person, and this event comes like every second. So every second you have a new event that comes here and you check if the person is in a designated area. If yes, for example, then you send a push notification. If not, then you you don't but if the events every second and the person is in the designated area you would receive the push notification every second you don't want this you want only to have this information when the value changes from being outside the area and when person enters the area you got message and then nothing you don't need another notification so here we can stop the workflow if the value and we can set the value to monitor for example on this branch we have like payload in area and it returns true and false and if this value changes then we will run this node again this way you can control the value and see if it changes these settings are not implemented here run in background join output data and this one append input to output is also very useful so let me give you an example i would delete this and have something like payload let's assume that we have two nodes that returns some payload. Okay, this one returns payload A1, and this one returns payload B1. When we run it, you can see that on the output you have payload A, but here we have payload B. But if I would like to have the first payload being passed to another node, select this node double click on it then go to advanced runtime configuration and just select append input to output it means that we received here a but here return b but i would like this payload to be appended to the output payload so input payload is appended to the output payload let's run it again and you can see on the output we have a and on the output of the create payload the second one we have a and b everything that comes as an input payload will be appended to the output as well and this is it for advanced runtime configuration this is the workflow that can be debugged with the debug button when you click on it you can see which connections work and which does not and you can also see the information on the errors that occurred on the certain node this one throws an error so obviously you will see that there's an error but beneath you see a list of the whole nodes that worked and you can see the numbers the sequence number how the nodes were executed so the, this one was executed first and this one was executed a second when you click here on the node you can see that the flow stopped due to an error because this is how this node behaves when you click on a node that uh, runs successfully you have like input output and state these are output nodes this is input and you can click on the input for example this red node is selected the end node the first one you can see on input this is the data it received and on the output it does not have any output but there's also a state each workflow has its internal state like an internal data that is always there the data can change between nodes you can inspect it here so for example for for this node we have a profile this is the profile data we have an event that was read this is the event data and this is session the session has no data but when we change something in the profile for example let's do something like copy data 
you can see there's indicated that something is wrong. You can go here to the log and see that profile update was skipped due to the bugging. Okay, so we may not see this. Let's go and try to do something else. Maybe we can, yes, we will see uh, the data change, but it will not be updated in the database. So let's go and set profile traits public and my data, and I will set it to some fixed uh, fixed value so if you would like to have a fixed value you click on this icon and here you can provide fixed value for example i want to be one plus don't forget to click plus and this is what will change profile trades public my data will be set to one okay let's save it and let, let's run it now we can inspect it so look at this state profile and trades public my data one this is a very important thing I uh, put one in purpose because right now you can see that this one is not actually one, it's a string, but I would like it to be one. So to do this, I will remove this and again, private my data, set it to one, but this time I will click this icon. This icon means that whatever I type, it's a string, but right now it will be evaluated to the value. So if it's one, it will be evaluated to one if it's true. Let's type true. True and the other one will do one. Okay, so data, my data will be equal to true and my data one will be equal to one. Let's go and inspect it. And here we go, it's true and one, not a string. Let's do it as like a string. So you can see this again, a state. Here we go, it's a string right now. So this is a very important thing uh, when you work with data and you have to remember that the workflow has internal state and this state can be changed with every node on the workflow. Uh, I even do something like this that I will set private x equals true to just to show you plus let's run it again and now you can see that state of the workflow on this step on this node the profile has my my data my data one my data two but on this step it has my data one two and x because with this node i added some data to the profile another important thing is we have to understand how the graph works because right now if i do something like this you have to know that this node will run twice you can see one two and two runs twice when you click on this uh, list to inspect a node you have a highlighted highlighted edge highlighted connection that says okay this is the information about this node with this connection but there's an, another thing if i place for example an end node here this node will also run twice because there's one path that goes here and there's another path that goes here let's do it again you can see it runs twice but this time you don't see it on the graph you see only one edge and you have like information on it and it's highlighted that it runs twice how can we merge data so there is no running twice of this node because sometimes you don't want it. Sometimes you would like to have to run it only once because we could like do a connection here, API connection. I don't have it uh, configured, so that may not work. Yes, it not, does not work, but this one would connect to the API twice, but I don't want it. Okay, we can use join. This is a new node in version 0.7.1. This one will collect the information that comes to this node from two edges and will merge it, join it, and will only run once. So let's go and do it. Here we go. Copy twice, two edges, join runs once, runs once, and end runs once. This is how you join the data from the different edges. But when you click on join, you can see that on the output, it has some, well, not very readable data. It says, okay, you have some data and there is like a big 
number it is the number from this this is the id of this edge so when you click on the edge double click you have the information on the edge and this is this number you can name the edge for example connection one and this time the output will be more meaningful meaningful format you will have the information about the connection let's remove this one and do something like this and run it again okay you can see that join was running twice and on the output we have two ids of those edges and we name it edge one edge two and then on the output we see that we have information on these edges and the end is run run only once there's another node that is very important it's called inject when you move it to the workflow you can inject some data into the workflow this is used mostly for the purpose of debugging this one reads the data from the database from the page view event it selects a random random event injects it and then you can see what happens this is like a production mode sometimes you would like to test the node and you don't need everything here i would inject some data and this time I have a control over the data. I say, okay, I will inject ABC1 and I eject, inject it into payload. So when I run it and see the input of my copy data, here we go, you can see it is ABC1. This is what I have injected. This node is for debugging purposes and we use it very frequently to test the node. For example, I have like some node I would like to test. I don't want to create the whole workflow, just have a test workflow and see how it works. For example, data exists. What it does, it checks if the data property exists and is not null. So let's go and see, okay, if the payload ABC exists. So I can use inject. Uh, I could even have, have it like this, start, let's do it like, like we have it before. But then I would like to test this node. Let's configure this one. Okay. And here I have another inject and do it a exactly the same maybe c1 and let's run it so you can see this one works as before this one works as before and this one we are testing the exist data and we can see it was run and you can see what's on the input and what's on the output on the port true we have passed the input payload you can also test it like this, so you can see it on the workflow, on the graph. Here we go, this one worked, and this one did not. There's another thing, if you have like a cluttered workflow, you can click arrange nodes, and it will try to arrange your nodes. It's not perfect, but it helps sometimes to rearrange the clunky workflow. There's one thing that you have to remember, that we are working on a draft, and if you would like to restore some production workflow, you can click here, and you will see the old the old uh, workflow, the workflow that is on the production. On the workflow sheet, you have also some buttons like data, so you can inspect data, profiles and events, and you can see details of those events. You can also test the workflow. This way you would have to like select an event source and send a page view, then you will see what happens. This is the re request and this is the response from the server. This is the event properties. I have set it to nothing. And there are also rules because workflow will not work if you do not connect it with the source. That means, for example, we would like connect the event type with, that comes from the source test with the current workflow. You have to give the, the rule a name, rule one, and this is the description of this rule it says that when something comes the source test and it's a page view then this workflow will, will work if you want to delete a node you just select it and press delete workflow is indicated when it's not saved but it will disappear when the system saves it to the database you can zoom workflow you can edit workflow name and description and tags you can also open the debug 
up, you may also want to move like a group of nodes. To do this, press shift and click your mouse, select your nodes and you can move it around. When you right click on a node, you will see a short description what this node is supposed to do. So for example, this one starts the workflow and this one ends the workflow. You have some nodes that are marked Pro. That means that they are only available as Trocardi Pro service. Okay, and this is it. These are the principles of working with Trocardi workflow. If you have some questions, just ask them in the comments and see you next time.